Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope that everybody is off to a great start to their week. Uh, I don't know what your goals are for the week, but I, I do hope that whatever it is that you have planned, that you are centered, that you are focused, and that you are prepared to go out and put in the work and take that which you have set your eyes and your goal goals toward. Uh, also, be prepared for obstacles. Be prepared for adversity. Be prepared for difficulty. Life isn't about the, the circumvention of your struggles, the circumvention of difficulty, the circumvention of hardships. Life is about the perseverance, the commitment, the seeing yourself through it, the overcoming it. And it's not comfortable. Life isn't about comfortable. What I can tell you is if you rest in comfort, you rob yourself of opportunity. You rob yourself of opportunity of being in the right place at the right time and having the momentum necessary to take advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. You have to come out of that comfort zone. You have to be prepared to go out and put in the work. Look, I'm not going to stay here long. I just want to share something with you on this Monday morning motivational uh, thing. And the funny thing is that we use the term motivation a lot, motivational speaker, motivational videos, motivation and inspiration. The thing and the truth is... Uh, in my observation in life that most of us are not in need of motivation. Motivation is something that should automatically be there. Motivation is simply the motive by which you are compelled to do something. Your motive should be living out the fullness of your potential. Your motive should be being in a position to ensure you can give your children the lives that they deserve. Being uh, uh, motivated should be your drive to be at a level of excellence for that's par, at minimum par on course for your potential at this particular point in time in your life. Your goal should be always aspiring to be greater today than you were yesterday, and that should be your motivation. Um, I believe that a lot of us need to be inspired sometimes because things get difficult, but I think a lot of us simply lack discipline. Uh, some of us get up every day and do what we have to do. Sometimes we get everything out of it we expected. Sometimes we get a lot less. But the goal is to wake up every day and to put in the work and to trust that over time, the energy and effort and time we put into it and we invest in ourselves and our purpose and our destiny and our God-given calling to be an impact on this world, that it will show up in the in, in the columns of life that matter to us, in our finances, in our relationships, in our businesses, in our homes, in our marriages, that we that it shows up. But you wake up every day and you put in the work. You gotta be a better person before you can be a better financier. You gotta be a better person before you can be a better business owner. You gotta be a better person before you can be a better husband. You gotta be able to be all of these things in yourself before you can be coming in an external force to anyone else in your periphery or in your life in general. It's about being a better you. And so when I look at it, you know, the thing that I find out first and foremost that we have to discipline is our thoughts. Before you can discipline your actions, before you can discipline your decisions, you have to discipline your thinking. What are you focusing on? What are you giving attention to? What are you giving power to? Whatever you focus on, you feel. You've got to start looking and focusing on the things that bring you power because they're there. Just like there are things that take away from you, there are things that give to you. What you focus on is what you feel. So you You've got to be able to discipline your thoughts. When you discipline your thoughts, you begin to discipline your decisions, discipline your choices, discipline the manner in which you engage life, how you think about things. Uh, I, I posted earlier this morning that it's not the facts in your life that have you stressed out. It's the definition and the interpretation of the facts, how you view the facts that have you stressed out. Because if you look at them differently, they present differently. If you see them differently, they have a different impact. When you give the facts more powerful than you give, when you give the facts more power than you give your faith, you run into difficulty. When you give the facts of your life, no matter what, more power than you give your faith, you're at a disadvantage. 
But when you let your faith step out in front of you, now you shape and frame the facts. Faith transcends facts. Now, the next thing is you must know your why. You must understand your why. Why are you doing something? What You've got this goal, but why? What's your why behind setting that goal? What's your why for needing to accomplish this certain specific thing? And here's why it's important, because there are going to be challenges. There are going to be difficulties. There are going to be moments of delay. There are going to be frustrations. Uh, there's going to be some of the things. The vicissitudes of life are going to roll into your paradise. That's a promise. Here's the thing. The gravity of your why will determine how well you fare in the darkest of times. Why? Because if your why is big enough, you're going to push through. If your why is big enough, you're going to stand firm. If your why is big, I see a lot in in the in the, in the populations and the groups that I that 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 I service, uh, particularly the women, but but to men either. And this is no slight to men, but I see it in women who are in a position to where they are now single mothers. I'm not talking about the ones in 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 any way is challenging, even if the father is. In, uh, incessantly present. I mean, they're there. They're doing everything. They're just not in the home yet. You couldn't make it. That's still a challenge to being a female head of household. And But I'm talking about the ones that dude is checked out and no other dude is yet checked in. You find out that that why of not letting the kid down or the children down is so powerful that I've seen massive walls pushed down simply because the why was so huge that they refused to fail. Now, should this be the case? Should this be what people have to do? No. But if you ever have to, you got to have a why that big that I cannot fail my babies. And I commend every black sister, every black woman that's out there that's been through that because that's not something that you should have to do. But, oh, my God, when you do it, it speaks to the power of your faith, the power of your perseverance. Now take that and apply it to any area in your life. Find the things that are so gravity driven in your life that you know that the why is bigger than any problem you're going to come into. Now set a blaze and push forward and watch what happens. Next, I see way too many people resting, but you haven't earned your rest. What does that mean? That means that people who rest are the people who work. You don't you haven't earned the right to rest until you've put in the work, until you've sat down and you have laid out the foundation, you have taken step after step. You put in the work. Then you take a moment to rest and recover. Why? So you can be at optimal form and state when you go in to put in the next day's work but just so many people resting on where they're at just sitting around just getting by just happy to be in a place and an existence that you're not paving out what tomorrow looks like so when you get there you got to figure it out that's not it, that's not living that's existing that's survival you've got to sit up and put in the work before you take your rest Next, we want to talk about uh, procrastinating. That kind of goes with what I just said about working. So many people are procrastinating because of fear. Fear of what people will say. Fear of failure. Uh, 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 you know, fear of uncertainty. Uh, just, just the monotony of it. Whatever it is, you procrastinate. You keep putting it off. What I can tell you is you got to be careful because the leverage arm of time is kind of funny. It's kind of funny and how it delivers it's not uh, a second wasted is a second loss a second wasted could mean six months loss you can literally procrastinate on taking an action today and it costs you six months in the progression towards your goal that's the truth and reality because in the day you take off that you procrastinate that may be the day that the person or the thing that you need to open the gateway to the abundance you're seeking is there and you miss it. Now you got to take the long route when you could have been there for an abundant moving in your life. You've got to stop procrastinating. One of the things I teach my clients on a regular basis 
And one thing I focus on is stop the procrastinate and take action. Sometimes making a decision that may seem risky or may be the wrong decision is better than taking no action or making no decision at all. Sometimes the stagnancy creates immovability and you lose momentum. Sometimes you can make a wrong turn and correct and still have the momentum to get where you need to get. You've got to be moving. Then we want to talk about watered down assessments. What, what am I saying when I talk about watered down assessments? A watered down assessment is when you look at your, where you're at right now. One thing that I do is I regularly take an introspective examination of where I'm at. And when I say introspective, that means I looked inside and I see what I'm doing. This isn't about blaming anybody. This is about looking at self and saying, are you doing everything that you can be doing? Are you taking advantage of the opportunities? Are you being wise in your judgments and in your movements? Uh, and you have to be honest with yourself. Are you where you should be? And if you're honest with yourself and you say, well, no, I'm not really. And then you say, well, why aren't you? Then you got to be honest with yourself. Well, if I, sh I should be doing this and I should be doing. So you got to stop having these watered down assessments. The watered down assessment is I'm here. But if so and so would have did this or if that person would have did this, I could have did, you know. And so you water it down and you take away the couple personal culpability in your position and you disperse it to a lot of people who really have no true impact on where you're at but it releases you from the responsibility and the culpability and the accountability of literally taking it, uh, taking responsibility for your life. You got to be honest with yourself. Stop watering it down and be honest with yourself. Look, I should be ahead of where I'm at right now. I cannot be satisfied with where I'm at right now. I've got to get up. I've got to make some moves. That's what you got to do. Then you've got to also get away from what 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 I call being a serial restarter which is a nice way of saying you quit as soon as it gets tough you quit then you start something else gets tough you quit you look up and you got all these things in life that you started and nothing has been finished. Again, that's why I love the people that I come across in my life that have had every reason in the world to quit, but they're still pushing on. They're still fighting. They had a horrible start, had every reason to just chalk it up and say, look at the hand I was dealt and look how I've been treated. I didn't even get to get out of childhood, but look at me now. I've started this and I've got this. I've started that and I've got that. I start, I mean, just one little piece at a time. It may not even seem much to the average person, but when you come from nothing and you start to make moves and you refuse to quit and you start to gain a little momentum and then your faith starts to expand and you start to understand something, if I set my mind to it, that's nothing that's impossible. If I can conceive it in my mind, that's God's evidence that it's possible and I refuse to quit. Let me tell you, the one guarantee in this life is that you quit, you fail. Everything else is up for negotiation. It's up for investment. It's up for work. It, there's no limit on the possibilities. The only guarantee is if I quit, I fail. So you've got to stop setting stuff down because it gets hard. You've got to make up in your mind at one particular point that at this point, I'm going to finish what I started. I can tell you it's not going to be easy. Nothing that I have attained worth having came to me easy. Now, there are some times that I was just so in a zone that it seems like things were, but every last one required work, investment, patience, and, and a commitment that says, no, I will not quit. No, I will not surrender. No, I will not retreat. No, I will not turn around. It takes some time, energy, and effort. There are things that I started 20 years ago that I just finished because I refused to give up on it, but the possibilities that finishing it have opened up for me are immense. Measurable. You've got to be willing to sit up and move beyond what you see as a challenge today and you can't quit. I guarantee you, if you quit, you will fail. Now, if you keep trying, or they go, absolutely, failure is a part of learning, but failure isn't final until you quit. 
I'll take the momentary failures to get where I'm trying to get in life. That my failures have grown me. They have conditioned me. My failures have seasoned me. I couldn't be a fraction of the husband that I'm trying to be to my wife without the failures of the past to teach me what I shouldn't be doing. And then I fail in that today. I'm still learning how to be the best husband. I'm still learning how to speak at the right time and say the right thing. I'm still learning how to shed myself in order to be the best person and leader for my family. But see, those failures aren't final. Why? Because I learned from them and they shifted and shaped me and taught me how to be something that I wasn't the day before. See, being something my grandfather used to always say when someone were to ask him, hey, hey, Deke, how you doing? He said, man, I'm not the man that I should be, but I thank God I'm not the man I used to be. And see, if I can wake up every day and I can say I'm not the man that I should be, but I thank God I'm not the man I used to be, then I'm growing. And if I'm growing, I'm going towards something because as I grow my capacity expands then, 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 then finally you have to have an understanding this goes back to that why again you got to have an understanding of the importance of your goals see when you have an understanding of the importance of your goals then they set the tone for how you move See, if I understand the importance of my goal, then it, 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 it dictates the energy, the effort, the commitment, the finality that I invest in achieving the goal. The goal has to be so important that giving up on it isn't an option. So that goes to that quitting thing. See, I, I, I tell people this all the time. Once I set my mind to do something, there are only two options. I'm going to get it or die trying. A lot of the stuff I set my mind to, people look at me and like, oh, there you go with that bull crap. He, he tripping. And then later down the line, they look up and say, he did it. He's still doing it. Why? Because it was important enough for me. I've learned that I only have 86,400 seconds in a day. A significant portion of that is going to be spent sleeping and resting so that I can be at my optimal state. So that means I've got even less time to actually invest in being the best that I can possibly be for my wife, for my children, for my family, for my community, for my friends. I have an investment in each and every day and I don't have time to waste. So I'm committed to it. So what I learned is I only take on the things that are important enough to me to remain committed to. Just because it sounds good don't mean I need to be doing it. Just because it's the end thing doesn't mean I need to be doing it. You've got to get to a point where you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and the gravity associated with it so that you are committed and anchored in it and sitting down in it. You've got to know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, the world will redefine you. The world will point out your failures and not acknowledge your successes. The world will point back to what you were 20 years ago without acknowledging the growth you've made over the last two decades. You've got to know who you are. You've got to look inside of yourself and know inside of yourself what you are designed to be and how much you've grown. You are going to be the last and final determining factor of the outcome of your life. God has equipped you with gifts. And we have been told in scripture that your gifts will make room for you. That it will bring you before great men. That every opportunity will come through the gifting when you start to actualize the, the potential associated with it. Too many of us are still trying to be what someone else thinks we should be. Too many of us are still trying to operate off of a blueprint someone else gave us that failed them. Know who you are. In knowing who you are, you will not always have the answer to every problem, but you will understand that within you, God resides and the God inside of you, the mind of God that is constantly present, will have the answer. I have been accused of being in denial at times. 
because I rarely become frenetic and unglued because of my situations. No, I'm not in denial. I am in direct connection with God and, and, and myself in connection and understanding of that. And in knowing that, I know that I'm so close to the answer that eventually it will open itself up to me. Why would I be upset and frenetic and frustrated about something I know I'm gonna get the answer to in the right timing and that I'm going to come out of it better than when I went in? Something Pops taught me a long time ago, son, you're gonna be in one of three places, going into a storm, in a storm or coming out. Those are the three places in life don't get frustrated by it. That's life. You're going to be going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out. Your only responsibility, son, is to come out of the storm a better man than when you went in. If you learn to do that, you won't have to chase greatness. It'll overtake you. You will write a legacy that nobody can rob you of. Don't get caught up in the moment. Don't get caught up in the temporary frustration and the pain. Have your mind set on what you're going to do in it and how you're going to come out of it and make sure that it shapes you and strengthens you so that you emerge better than when you went in. Life wasn't sent to destroy you. It was sent to groom you for greatness. And so I'm telling you, don't quit. Don't give in. I'm going to shut it down now. I hope that what I shared with you was a blessing. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that you can take it. Again, I'm going to be cranking these up again. It's been a while since I've been consistent. So much has gone on. Uh, survived five heart attacks uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, and it's been a slow boogie back, but I'm here. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about where we're going uh, with Rick Wallace Enterprises, the Vision Genetics Institute, Odyssey Media, and publishing and so many other things that we do. I'm excited about that, the Odyssey Project. I'm excited about that. Uh, and so this year is a big year for what we're doing. And uh, despite all the challenges, the, the pandemic and all this other stuff that's come up and that has hit businesses, we're still moving. We're still in the fight. We are moving. And, and I'm excited uh, to be a part of change, to be a part of empowerment. Uh, to be using the gifts that were uh, inherently a part of my DNA and my design to change the world, to write a legacy that speaks of me long after I'm gone. And that's what I'm going to be challenging each and every one of you to do, is to write that legacy. Write that legacy. Look, uh, in, the, in the description box, there are going to be two books, uh, just two of 24. The person that was told book number one would never make it to publishing is now at 24. 24 is dropping this week. 23 dropped a week and a half ago. Not, maybe not even that long. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do two books at one time again, <laughs> man. Uh, but it's, 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 it's an honor to be able to deliver. I'm excited about it. Check one of them. I, I put Critical Mass in there. It's book number 20. Uh, but it, 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 it represents a turning point and I think it's one of the most powerful books as far as empowering an individual uh, that I've written um, and that says a lot and Merging Souls is 23 I didn't put that one in there I don't think did I yeah I think I did I think the Merging Souls is the other one Merging Souls if you're talking about a relationship you need to read that book no matter where you're at in the relationship process in one going into one thinking about one in the future you need to read that book look I'm gonna get out here as I always say I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. And when you live your life like that, you have so fewer regrets. It doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It means even the mistakes tend to work towards your purpose. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. I'm out. Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas 
uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Jay, people talk Real about talk, it, it's it's all of the elements.